guy. How we doing? How we doing? How we doing, everybody? We're back in the house, and the house is, of course, packed. Your godfather's in the house. Camera one. Camera two. Camera three. Ready to go. Ready to be. What's going on? What's going on? What is going on, man? Nieces and nephews, kin folks and cousins. Your godfather is back in the house, and the house is, of course, pissy, pissy, packed. Did you miss me? I know you did. I know you did. What was, I was out there doing what I needed to do. I know. He wrong for that, baby. I know I'm wrong for that, baby, but it's okay. I know. I know. I know I'm wrong for that, baby. But we're going to make it up to you. I'm, come on, baby. I'm, look, let your godfather make this up to you, okay? I know exactly how you like it. Yeah, girl. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So what I want you to do, I want everybody to go ahead and hit that, that gum like button. Hit that like button like you know what it is. Hit that like button like you flicking that bean. Ha, ladies, hit the like button like you flicking the bean. Ha, ha, we going at it tonight. We're on the eve of Valentine's Day. What the heck just happened with the coloring? Oh, no, that won't work. All right, let's get the windows back open. Did, you, did everybody have a good weekend? I know I did. What the French toast? Oh, the tent was reset. All right, so here's what I want you guys to do. Enjoy the show as it comes up. What's been happening since I've been I've been gone for a minute? Anything new? <laughs> Anything new since I've been gone for a couple of days? Oh, where are my manners? Where are my manners? <clears throat> Fragrance of the day. Okay. Sometimes there are fragrances that come along that are just so damn good. I got to share them with you guys. Now, I'm going to openly tell you that this fragrance line is proud of their fragrances. Okay? But I, I'm also going to tell you that I don't just present something to you guys that I don't rock and wear myself. And these two right here, we're going to do one at a time. Today's fragrance is from, I, I'm, I'm working on learning Spanish right now. So, and after I get a little decent in Spanish, I'm going to switch over to another language. French probably won't make it, but today's fragrance is from the fragrance line, Fragrance du Bois. Okay. This fragrance line is all about luxury oud. And the fragrance I'm rocking is one called Parisian. Shout out to Alan over there at Beverly Hills Perfumery. Tell him uh, your godfather sent you. What makes this fragrance so good? Is it, I, have two I have two videos back. Before I ever became the godfather and, you know, Big Shirley and all this other stuff. Before there was ever... A, I'm a PhD. Before there was ever a PhD or whatever, I was an image consultant and a fragrance reviewer, okay? I really do this stuff in real life. If you meet people... And, and if, you, if you meet people who meet me out in the real world, they would tell you chances are very high they have seen me at the fragrance counter somewhere because I'm studying my craft. Okay? Why is that important? Well, hold on. What did your husband say about this? Did y'all discuss it? No, I'm not married. I, don't, I would not choose. I would not choose to date into something like that. I got choose to be single. Okay. I'm a PhD. Okay. Congratulations. PhD, damn it. Huh. I told you I was going to make you famous. Play with me. Fragrance Dubois, okay? It's the house, okay? I have two videos out. Fragrances that drive women nuts, part one and part two. Both fragrances on the, and this fragrance is better than one of the fragrances I have listed. The fragrance I'm talking about is Incense Oud from Killian, which is discontinued. This one right here is a much more refined, sophisticated Incense Oud. I'm telling you, man, Incense Oud is a masculine, 
uh, women get women are going to uh, start to ovulate around you wearing this stuff, and this stuff is so potent, and it's so so goddamn good. It's smooth, it's laid back, it's sophisticated, it's sexy. Parisian from Fragrance Dubois. So, and I picked this up from Beverly Hills Perfumery when I was down there in, uh, when I was out there in Beverly Hills. And the other one I'm going to talk about tomorrow is the one that really brought me to. This fragrance, I'll tell you about it tonight, but I'm not going to wear it till Wednesday. Sara, Sahra, S A H R A. A. Amber Oud. Who I wore this when I wore it. Where was that? Oh, yeah. I went to Salt Bay. Y'all know the restaurant Salt Bay? So I was in uh, LA and I was in Beverly Hills. So I went to the acclaimed Salt Bay restaurant and I was rocking this fragrance. And everywhere I went, people were like, oh, what are you wearing? This is a sexy mother sucker. But I'll talk more about that on Wednesday. But this one right here, uh, and yes, I paid for them. Yeah. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, that's so good. Get me all off. Candle of the Evening, Laurier 62 from Le Labo. Um, bam. Hold on, guys. I want to make sure this is right. Excuse me just a second. So, we're back in Atlanta this week, and next week we head off to Miami, and then the week after that we're in Vegas. Why? Because we're getting into the field where the work is real, okay? Um, and I, I told you guys at the end of 2021, it was my, I, I am going to take this to the next level. We've had the conversation. We've had the average at best. We've had the buy a dog and dialogue. We've had all those moments. Now, where the conversation is this year is going to be about self-awareness. Self-awareness is sexy. And then outcomes. And to that end, you got to get out of the echo chamber. You got to get away from the, the conversation you're already having because I think on either side of the argument, they're 10% men over here that are extremely anti-relationship. And there's 10% women over there. Then there's also another 10% or so that's, you know, already in another world. It's the 80% in the middle that I think you can have a conversation with. This is not a niche argument. But one thing I'm going to challenge everybody to do is you're going to start, start listening to the videos and stop listening to clips because... There is going to ne be, need to be context around the things I say and to some degree of nuance. But I always try to make complex ideas simple. So simply 2022 is about self-awareness, separation, and balance. Self-awareness, separation, and balance. Self-awareness, self-explanatory, awareness of yourself, who you are, what you want, why you want what you want, and then go match, go get what matches that. Separation. Look, you are going to, have, if you want to be anything in this life, you're going to have to separate from the pack. You're going to have to pull away from the pack, and that means getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that uh, may be foreign. And that, and when you separate, you're going to deal with it. You're going to deal with things that make people uncomfortable. When you separate, you make yourself a target. 48 Laws of Power. You also give yourself room to move. When you're in the pack, you can't. There's a video I want to show you guys as I want to lead into this thing about focus. Um, as you separate, you got to realize that there's going to come a point in time, man, where you're going to just have to leave the people you grew up, you grew up with uh, behind. And that doesn't mean you don't like them. But that just means everybody can't go with you. That just doesn't mean everybody can't go with you. Everybody can't be where you're going to be. What's for you is for you. I want to show you guys something. I want to show you guys something. That, I want to play this in the background. Is this it? Okay. 
No, that's not it. But separation, separation is going to be is going to be required if you're going to get anywhere and do anything in life. And understand when you separate, what happens when you separate is it's going to make people uncomfortable. It's going to make people uncomfortable because people move like this. And when you start to separate from the crowd, you start to make people uncomfortable. So look at that. There's food on both sides, right? And here they come. Let's go ahead and speed this up to get to the point. I want you guys to watch what happens with the herd mentality. Watch what happens with the herd mentality. There's food on both sides, but look what's going on. I want you to understand the herd mentality in, in, in mammals is so overwhelming that even though there's food and space, our instincts are to to, to go to someplace else. This video is called The Perfect Mouse Trap. Okay? Let's go ahead and speed on up. Let's go ahead and get through here. You see what's happening. But here's the thing. Now you can, all the mice can see what's going on, but look at them. And look at it. They're gonna, there's going to come a point in time where there's going to be some mice that are going to say, oh, wait, they're going to climb up, look around, going to want to turn back around, and the mice are going to start pushing them in. Now look at the ones on the outside. The ones on the outside are free. The ones on the inside are trapped. Separation, baby. Uh-oh, uh-oh, two more went in. Why? The instinct. Separation is a powerful thing. Now look at that. Look at that. That, that, that was the first one that went in and said, uh-uh. No, I, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm not going in there. It's better out here. Now here's the funny thing. What's going to start to happen? The mice that were over on the inside of the t trap, now they're going to start to get anxious. They were eating the food, but the food ran out. Now they recognize they're trapped. Now they want to get out. This is just a plexiglass with a mesh top, and they can't climb their way out. Look at them. Now imagine, you know, imagine if this experiment ran to its natural end. What would happen if the cameras are turned off and they just let the mouse stay this way? You come back a week later to a bloody mess because there's no food left. You know what would start to happen. Three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. Look at them. They're like, oh, 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 let me get out of here. Look up the mouse utopia experiment of the seven, late 60s and 70s. As a good indicator. Yeah, they're stuck. Oh, how do we get out of here? Look at this other mouse. He's like, uh, uh oh, no, 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 no. See, <laughs> those mice, uh, the mice that didn't go in, would make it to the next. Would make it to the next. Uh, their gene, their DNA would make it to the next level. The mice that went in, they're dead. They're dead. Why is this important? Because if you stay where you are, if you go where the pack is, there's no room. If you go where the other people aren't, there's plenty of room, is room over there and room from where people left. And we're not talking about at the bottom, we're talking about the top, but you better get prepared. Everybody's talking about high value men and this and that, it's lonely at the top. But it's only lonely if you don't prepare for it. This is why you have your wolf pack, your mentor, your coach. You, you pay and build a network around you Self-awareness, separation, and balance. And balance is what I want to talk about today with the ladies. L ladies, there's an old quote. 
that I don't know who to attribute to, but Dolly Parton gets a lot of it. Don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Okay? Don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. I, we need a thousand more likes or we go straight to intermission. 30 seconds, the chat room cuts off unless we get the likes up. Don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Dolly Parton was uh, was, a, was who I know who said it anyway. What is that ultimately saying? It's saying that, look, careers and all this stuff and passions are fine, but, but more important than all of that is the life. And this is what I want to talk about. The modern women's focus fallacy. What is a fallacy? Look down in the the description. A fallacy is a mistaken belief, especially one based on an unsound argument. The notion that the camera never lies is a fallacy. Or it's a failure in reasoning which renders an argument invalid. A potential for fallacy lies behind the notion of self-esteem. Why is this important? Shout out to A Free. Appreciate it, my fam. Uh, Let's go ahead and read some of these uh, super chats that came through. A Free came through with the 200. Look, uh, uh, let's see. Shout out Luke Casely. How how you doing? Shout out uh, Technological Chaos. (laughs) <laughs> I wonder if the de, de, de Blasio of New York Mayor Bill de Blasio variant can be added to a new mutation. Big violent. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, tripping. Okay. I, I need to get into the program, though. I got to get to the program. So, all right. Let's get into it. The, the, the fallacy, the, the focus fallacy. Don't get so busy making a living, you forget to make a life. And the fallacy is so many women are being told. Do you focus on you and then get your shit together, get your stuff together, and then once that's done, then get a man. Or then you'll be able, then you'll be ready for a man. And to some extremes, you hear women saying, then go pick, then you can pick your man. Okay, let's take this one step at a time, okay? In physics, there's something called a derived equation, a derived number. And in physics, one of the biggest mistakes you can do is take a derived number, a a derived equation, and work it all the way through. Let's say two plus two is four, or x plus y equals four, okay? X plus y equals four. But let's really, that's, that's a derived equation. But let's just say X plus Y really equals 4.1. Not much difference. But if you take X plus Y equals 4.1 and you, X, and you use it over and over and over, each operation, the, the answer gets further and further from the truth. Imagine it this way. If you've ever ridden a bike before, if you if you've ever driven a car before, if the if the wheels are not aligned, a slight misalignment can have you in a ditch. But the faster you go, the more you'll see it. The slower you go, the less the car will pull. Many women are being given the wrong information. Execute order 66. And you are 66, you're 0.66 degrees off of the target. And it seems like a little thing when you're 19 years old. Focus on you, girl. Don't worry about nothing. Do you, boo? You need to get out here and have your fun. City girls, we up. Da, 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 da. But the issue is time. I didn't make female nature, but women have to get the larger parts of their life together sooner than men. And oftentimes women are being told, to forego relationship, marriage, children over some sort of focusing on your career. Let's be honest. 20 to 30% of all people own a business. 
Let's just say, for sake of math, 25%. Split the difference. 20, 25, 20, 30, split the difference, 25. Okay. If 25% of women are entrepreneurs or business owners, that means three out of four have jobs. Three, one. If you have a job, it's not a career. It's survival. It's making a living. But we have far too many people telling women who are making a living to not focus on making a life. Why is this? How does this happen? Well, this happens because and you can't automatically assume that everybody's doing it with malicious intent. But I'm going to go ahead and say some things that we need to know. One, it tends to be pushed by academics, celebrities, or people who are generally in the, what you would consider to be in the elite. The top 10%, the top 10% of education, top 10% of earners, blah, blah, blah. And this is, in the black community in particular, this is often pushed by women who are in the industry, music, entertainment, celebrity because they're making more money than the average woman. The average woman in this country, the median income for women is 25,792. 25, That's the median. You know, I will break down the numbers more this week, but let's take the black community. $37,000 is the average black woman's income. But owning 65, 65% of a $1 trillion, $1.6 trillion debt. Why is this important? Because if you're taking your cues from women, who have high earning p potential, they're telling you focus on your thing. And it sounds good, but it doesn't play out. Why is it being pushed? Well, there's one obvious reason why. Keeps you spending. Keeps you spending, keeps you, keeps you spending, keeps you buying. I mean, homes are not, apartments are going up everywhere. Why? All these single women got to have somewhere to live. Why is this important? Because it sounds good. Focus on yourself, girl. Worry about yourself, girl. You can go to school. You can go get your PhD. I'm a PhD. And while you're out there, go ahead and get you a little dog. <laughs> Live here, do that. Have fun. Hot girl summer. Turn up, blah, blah, blah. And then when you're 30 years old, then you can decide to settle down. But I ask the question. What are you going, how, what are you doing? What are you learning in your 20s? by being independent that's going to benefit you in a relationship, in a marriage. What are you learning? Number one. Number two, getting yourself together. How many times have you guys heard me talk to young women, young black women in particular? Oh, that's too young to get married. I need to, I need to, I need to get myself educated and I need to stack some money. So what? Just in case. Execute. Order 66. So just in case something doesn't happen this way or that way, I'll be all right. For sake of argument, 100% of marriages are initiated by men, meaning we do the proposing. Yes, there are anecdotal cases where women do this or that, but it's statistically insignificant. If 100% of marriages are initiated, we offer you may accept, we offer. If 100% of our marriages are initiated by men, 80% of divorces are initiated by women. Okay? That stat, that stat you can look it up yourself. 70 to 80%, depending on the, some variance about, among ethnicity. As we get into this, what's the issue? What are women being told to do? Be sexually liberal in your, you know, do what you want to do, date who you want to, hook up with who you want to. And here's my thing. There are two groups of women, wives and everything else. Wives and everything else. And if you're a woman and knows you want to be a wife, you need to act like a woman who's going to be a wife one day because you're going to be judged as, you're going to be, you're going to be evaluated as such. There's no, I was young and dumb and I did this, I did that. Look, men are, th that game is over. Men are pulling your, your, men are pulling your cat facts. They're running your background and saying, there's no way in hell I'm going to be, 
uh, own partner track at a law firm and I'm going to deal with you and you used to date Nug Nug or you used to do this, you used to do that. Nope, you make me look bad. But let's stick in the middle. Focus on yourself. And what are we telling? We're telling women who got communication degree, criminal justice, social workers, teachers, women who are in that mushy middle, 74% 74% of black women make less than $50,000. We're telling these women to delay relationship and marriage. For what? You ain't making no real money. I was talking to a woman the other day. I was like, how much money do you think you need to have stacked away to make marriage a safe proposition? She said, $100,000. $100,000. Now, I want you guys to look at this. Let's just, for simple math, round up 37000 to 40000 That's a big jump. That's almost a 10% raise. But for simple math, let's say the average woman's making $40,000. How long would it take a $40,000 earner to stack $100,000 cash? Because you make forty, you ain't taking home forty. dollars and you living at your budget. Most people don't even have the money to put away $500 a month. So how many months would it take to stack $100,000? So she said, well, maybe 50. Still, ladies, look in your checking account right now. And if you feel like you need to have a nest egg or something, Why do you ladies feel like you need something in case when it's you walking away from relationships 80% of the time? I'll tell you because it sounds good. Girl, do for yourself. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Look, I understand the impulse, but you also have to look at who's telling you this, ladies. And there's nothing, there's no reason for me or guys that think like myself to argue that. All the time, I I talk to women often who are career women, boss chicks, career driven, such and so forth. And you've heard me over the last year or two when I when I ask a woman what she wants, and what she wants is to be her own boss and not this or that one. That's self-aware. Have at it. But what you ain't going to do is you ain't going to go out here and be all this self where bad chick, but da, 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 and then think you're going to think you're going to do something like this. Snap your fingers. And then all of a sudden uh, become a housewife to a, a housewife to a high value man. No, 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 no. If you are a boss chick, high earner and and so forth, guess what you got to do? You got to do just like the high value men do or the men with money. You got to settle. You have to go settle just like these men have to settle for somebody who makes less than them and has less than them. But see, men don't have a problem settling for women who earn less such and so forth because it's in our nature to build up. You settling makes you feel like you're paying for a man. That's why you tend to have so many women with means when they realize they are incompatible with the men in their socioeconomic position. What do they end up doing? They end up marrying a guy down here. No shot, but that's just what it is. So, ladies, you need to ask yourself a serious question. Not now, but at age 55, what do what does life, what do you want your life to look like for you at a social level? Not your money, not your traveling, not your trips, not this, your social level. And then ask yourself, how is focusing on you going to facilitate that outcome? How is focusing on you going to facilitate that outcome? Now, I know a lot of guys are sitting back saying, okay, man, that feels good. That sounds good. Uh, But if if you're not planning on getting married, 
this ain't the conversation. We shouldn't really worry about what women are focusing on. Uh, D. Meyer says, what is the highest age before the highest age before first marriage, any group of women in history? We are, he said, we are at the highest age before the first marriage in any group of women in history since recorded time. It's amazing to both Women don't want to be married to the men they want to marry them. Okay. All right. That's a lot. Shout out to Rich Turner on the wood for the greater good. Look. See, when I when I sat down and talked with uh, Nikki, Nikki Minaj, shout out to you. A lot of people wanted to see us go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, if that's the case, you haven't been watching me very well. I challenge you. I challenge you to go back and look at how I handle married women. If I know a woman is married or if I find out a woman is married and she asks me to rank her, what do what is my standard answer? A free, Luke Hazley, moderators, anybody who's been around. If I if I know a woman is married or if I find out a woman is married and they ask me to give them a ranking, what is my standard answer? Interview a potential wife. Uh, no, I'm going to interview women in the cat in the category, but the thing is, I don't know what your wife would be. That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. Deshaun said it. You don't rate people who are married out of respect. Thank you, Deshaun. Deshaun is the person that transcribes and gives you the chapters. When I find out a woman is married, especially a woman is married, still married and has children, I leave it alone because she's off limits. That's the way I was raised. My opinion doesn't matter. Her husband's opinion matters. I can think you are a three, but if your husband married you, I have no right I want to say, right, I'm out of bounds to just do that. And you guys know, if you watch me across the board, I tend to back away. And only when kind of asked, and in general, when somebody's married, I don't delve too much into their situation unless they're probing and asking questions about it. That's always been. Number one, number two, let me address this to the rating thing. I can understand why there's some confusion here. So let me be clear. I rank face. There's a difference between rating a face and rating somebody overall. When you rank a face, I always ask the same questions. Height, weight, dress, size. Da, 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 da. When I ask you to rank yourself fresh face out of the shower, you can't use seven. Standard question. But many people have said, well, I thought you rate people before any improvements or plastic surgeries and things like that. I'm going to do an entire video on this. Yes and no. Here's the thing with that. It's about time and proximity. And I'm going to use somebody like Sweetie. Sweetie, that was a big to do because I gave her an adjustable six. Sweetie has been newer on the scene than somebody like a Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj has been around for over a decade. So, Honestly, I don't I don't remember what she would look like way back in the day. I I've you've seen people's image evolve. But let's take it away from Sweetie and Nicki Minaj and use somebody like Mariah Carey. When Mariah Carey came out in 1990, she was thin, racially ambiguous. Some people thought she was white, some people thought she was black. She looks different today than she did then. She has uh, more voluptuous. I'm assuming she may have had some work done, standard in Hollywood. But here's the thing. You look at time. Uh, you look at time in the market. I, you can't rate Ma Mariah Carey at 40 up, as opposed to Mariah Carey at 20. It makes no sense. You have to. You have to keep up with, let's see, have you looked this direction longer? So this is why the business of image consulting and, and model selecting is there's a there's a general through line with people in the business. And then there's people who have opinions. The difference is the people who get paid to do it 
have a basis for why they do what they do. People who don't, just like anybody else, you have an opinion. So therein lies that. So you, know, you gave her a nine and she's married, she's a strong guy. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. That may be what you think. And it just goes to prove that that interview goes to prove that the extremes are on both sides. And I have nothing to do with the extremes. If you're an extreme man hating woman, I ain't got nothing to talk to you about. Do you? If you're extreme over here, got nothing to do with you. Never have. But more on that later, I'm going to make it in a concise video so people can still kind of understand because I, I watched that video 15 times and I stand on it. I've even put, I've even digitized, well, anyway, I don't just say shit. I've even talked to colleagues of mine and say, well, this is what I saw. Did you see? The, yep. Pretty much in line with everything we say. The, the question is either eight or nine. It's always the lowest I've heard someone, somebody who I respect gives her a solid eight. But most eight, nine. And these are people who get paid to do this. So. Yeah, Mariah Carey. See, like I said, people in there, Mariah. Look, and, and people bring up her dating history and all. They ain't got shit to do with any of this. Back to the subject. Ladies. What do you want out of life? And why do you feel like you should be free to do whatever you want and then have it and, and then be able to push a button at, at whatever age you feel like you should decide to get serious and act like it didn't happen? The focus fallacy. So many women are focusing on making a living. You're forgetting to make a life. So many of you are focusing on this dream. This is why this entrepreneurial boss chick thing is so dangerous because so many of our women are, are, are trying to become real estate and this and that and crypto and such and so forth, making all this money when the average person has a job. And you look up and I see so many women, 40, 45 years old, who are just like, damn, I have spent all this time trying to become something that I didn't even want. Last part, and I'm open to call lines. Here's the funny thing. Shout out to the PhD. I'm a PhD. You believe this person actually tried to get that video taken down? That was, that was pretty childish. You made yourself look that way, ma'am. I didn't do that. You did that. You did that. You came onto my program, and I'm normally a pretty reasonable person, but I don't, I don't play these games. You're a PhD. I'm a PhD. I don't need a cookbook. That's your life. Choose to do it. But leave me alone. So many women are focusing on what they don't right now, not looking into the future. And if you're willing to live and die alone... <laughs> Then, then, then hats off to you. But the reality is, Deshaun, A. Free, Lou Casely, you know it, Wrench Turner, you know it, and I know it. How many women on this show have admitted they believe they'll be the ones that die alone or homeless on the street out of money? No woman really believes that. You all believe you're the exception to the rule. Well, then here's the question. How are you going to be of use and of value to a man that you value if you spent your prime years being only of use and self-serving? This is why it is so difficult to date a woman over 35 because she is who she is. She is stuck in her ways. She is set in her ways. She is not going to change. A woman over 35 is pretty much who she is for a lifetime. I'm not going to say 30, but 30 to 30. I'm going to say a th range 30 to 35, but definitely 35. She is who she is. Well, that's not true, Kevin. She could make some changes, one or two percent. And the changes that she could make are going to have to be self-starting changes 
and they're going to be have to. Are they going to make a difference to the kind of man she wants? What I'm ultimately asking is: All you ladies who want to focus on yourself and this and that, do you want to have a family? Do you want to have a husband? Then why are you waiting? when life made it such that women should get started sooner. I'm not for, I'm not for young marriage, but I'm for sooner marriage. If I were to say a great age to get married, 23, 22 to 25 for women, 22 to 25. I would say that perfect age, 23 to 25. I would narrow that down. But if I, if I were going to give it a five-year gap, 22 to 27, with the prime years being 23 to 25, I would say in, in less, in over 27, a woman, you need to look at her friend circle, where she lives, her social media, all these things, because she has been out here long enough, and you must, inv- you must vet. There are two things that separate human beings, biology, and culture. Shout out to Jordan Peterson. The more you, the more you condense one, the larger the other difference is. The, the cultural differences between men and women have been shrank to the point where we're equals, right? We're equal. This, so the biological differences have to become more. So ladies, how many of you ladies are 27? and older, living the Sex in the City lifestyle, hoping to find Mr. Big. And then, you know, just like I know, when I ask the question, do you want to be married? Yes. How many children do you want? Two to three. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant and married with the first child? No. What percentage of the overall family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for a lifetime? Generally, it's less than 10 per, Generally, it's less than 20 percent, 15 percent. So effectively a tip. So if you don't work or don't bring in income, you don't, do you want that to have an, an, a deleterious impact on your family? No. Do you want your children to be able to go to college if they so choose? Yes. Do you want to be able to pay for that? Yes. Do you want to travel domestically and internationally as a family? Yes. This is an upper class lifestyle. We today, we have average women who want a luxury lifestyle. And you have women who live a luxury lifestyle telling you to focus on yourself. You don't hear women making $40,000 a year as a school teacher, you don't hear women making $40,000 a year as a bus driver or uh, a social worker or in retail telling you focus on yourself, girl, and live your life. You have women in academics, politics, and celebrity telling women to focus on yourself when they don't live your lifestyle. Let's talk about it. Nope, I don't want that song. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Ladies only. Ladies only. Oh, uh, yeah. It's always, it's always curious to me when women sit there and tell women this stuff. They mean well. That don't mean it's going to change. Man. Luna. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. Money work. Recording in progress. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. Si me quiero educar. Yeah. Dormir en algún lugar. Un lugar para trabajar. Yeah. Y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el putin entero yeah. Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios te lo ve Que por más 
que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos fe de dinero Ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Yo digo las cosas como son, no quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón, porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves, sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés, ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde vengo ni cómo voy If you don't want to be on YouTube, you don't have to be. But uh, people ask me interview marriage type women. Oh yeah, that's what I, when I start doing on camera interviews is I'm going to interview the women who have beauty brains. Many of them have businesses. The kind of women that men would want to deal with. I'm not going to say their wives because what. Here's one thing I will say. A lot of guys, especially especially in these spaces, think that most men are like you. Very few, I don't know what percentage of men you guys think are lean, very traditional and patriarchal kind of stuff. That's less than probably about 15% of men. So I'm not going to try to find wives for everybody. I'm going to interview women that have the qualifications, have the looks, the beauty, the talent, the character, whose wife she'll be, maybe something else. Hello. I can't hear you. Uh, I can't see you, though. What, what's your first name? What's the question? Is that what kind of what, what advice a woman is supposed to do or be to attract what kind of man? Uh, uh, okay, well that's really not the, that's really not the show tonight. How to attract a man? We're talking about the uh. focus fallacy. Women focusing on themselves instead of worrying about relationship. So a different show. Okay. Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself. You can stay in the chat room, though. Go ahead, Cheyenne. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to start bringing on more women. Here's what I won't do. I'm not going to bring on women that I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be seen in public with. How about that? They might not be your cup of tea. They might not have your, but I can't, I can't just sit around and say, I'm going to interview, hey, Stepford wives and shit, because I don't know y'all. And if I did that, you'd have to pay me for it. Cheyenne, unmute yourself. Hello, how are oh. you? Hi, good evening. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. How old are you? Uh, 24. All right, so what's the question? Well, a question that has been on my mind is, once you obtain a high-value man, 
how do you keep him? How do you keep him? Yes. Uh, well, let's start here. How do you think you would keep him? Well, he told me from the start he wants to be taken care of. So, I mean, I've just been doing that, like just cooking, cleaning, uh, mm -hmm. doing his laundry. Um, I don't know, picking up things from the store when he needs them, um, doing things around the house. Um, okay. I don't know, whatever he wants, whatever he asks for, I just do it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to say this. So in, in a lot of ways, you seem like you're doing like uh, house cleaning. Um, in a way, yes. Okay. How old is he? 40. And he hasn't given you any more instructions? Um, what do you mean necessarily? Yeah, it should come with, okay. There's an age gap between you guys. And if he's going to have you, you guys live together? No. Okay, well, it's a job. And have you, have you ever had a job? No, I haven't been a manager. You've never had a job before? Oh, sorry, I thought you said, have I been a manager? No, I've had, I've had a job, yes. So every, or, okay, what kind of jobs have you had? Um, specifically in retail and customer service. So every job you have, there's been training in the job description. Yes. Okay, you should have job description. What's your job description? But well, this is a problem I have with older men dating younger women. You guys, you gotta get you got you gotta have a job description. Because what you describe, young lady, uh, is a housekeeper and a cook. No shade at that. But what it sounds more to me like is a is a failure of leadership. You should know what he expects versus uh when you were at work, did you know what your manager expected you to do? Yes. Same, same premise. Um, how long have you guys been together? Um, about three months now. Okay. Well, uh, how do you keep him? Well, I don't. I, I'm gonna do it this way. Um, what kind? Of, what outcome uh, do, do you want? That's the thing. Um, he told me from the start as well, and this is where I'm confused at too. He told me from the start, um, he doesn't want to get married again, and he doesn't um, want to have any more kids. But well, we both agreed on that. So. What was the question I asked you though? Um, what was the outcome you want? I probably need to do some more thinking over, I don't know. Do you want to be married? No, I don't. Do you want children? No, I don't. What does life look like for you at age 55, socially? Not good. I say again. Not good, probably. No, 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 no. I need you to think forward to fifty-five and tell me what the fifty-five-year-old version of you, unmarried, no children, over the next thirty-one years, what does your social life look like? What is it going to evolve into? I'm really not too sure. Where's your father? In prison. Right. There we go. Um, 
Well, if this man told you don't want any kids and don't want marriage, and you're just along for the ride, as long as you're content with the outcome, I can't see that he's done anything wrong. You know, some people may disagree with that. I mean, but you're a grown woman. If you want to be naive, but you can't be. You're an adult. Why don't you want kids? Not, I mean, not everybody does, but why don't, what's your reason? I just personally believe, like, it's not, like, for me. Like, the, I don't know, people say school's not for everybody. I just feel like children's not for me. Being a mother is not for me. I strongly feel like I can't take that responsibility. Well, you should know you're, I mean, you should know you're not, you're too selfish to have kids. That's fine. That's fine. Did you go to college? Um, I started, but then I stopped. The answer is no. So how are you going to take care of yourself? Honestly, I've been trying to figure that out. I'm going to say something that's going to be rather harsh. I'm ready. You don't figure it out on the end of a man's dick. At this point, you're a danger to yourself because you're just out here doing stuff. You're sexually involved with a man who already has been married and got kids. He doesn't want to be married. And just because you haven't thought about next Tuesday doesn't mean this is what you should be doing. So I would say stop this and, and start understanding where you want life to be at 55. If it's not married, fine. There's no kids, fine. But if it's not married, you better have a way to pay for yourself until you die. Because you won't have a family and no one's going to pay for you. You won't have kids to depend on. So you need to get a career that's going to pay you in excess, high five figures, six figures, and you stack that money and save it like a miser. You can't go through life. I don't know this. I don't know that. I dropped out of this. At this point, you're just floating through life. And at 25, if a man was moving like you, we would call him a loser. So don't sound like you should be in a relationship at this point. But it does sound like here's what you don't do. Don't go make any. You don't want kids. Good. Um. But if you don't want college, you're going to have to have some sort of trade or the military. Far too many of our women just uh, get stumped when you start asking hard life questions, just like deer in the headlights. All right, let's do this. Unmute yourself, Leah. Hello. Hey. hey How are you? I'm here. I'm How old good. are you? I'm good. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. Um. So, what do you think about? Don't. When you start asking hard life questions, like. Okay, first off, McCormick, you're going to have to turn off the YouTube in the background. You're in, in the stream. So, um, what do you think? What do you, have to, what do you have for me on the topic? What are we talking about? The focus fallacy. I've kind of got in, like, inside of that, inside the black culture, too, where they tell you, you got to wait. I got out of a five-year relationship um, probably about two, three years ago, about three years ago, and everybody was telling me, you need to focus on yourself, um, mm -hmm. go to school and just wait on dating. Don't, you know, come back out. So now I've been stuck because I've been single. <laughs> now, How long have you been single? And, uh, well, not from the five-year relationship. It was, I've been talking to guys, but it's been about 
three years since I've actually been in a real relationship. You have any children? No. So who was telling you that you needed to wait? My mom, my friends, my aunt. What is, her, what is, her, what is your mother's husband? What did he say? She doesn't have one, but okay. Then don't why you listen. Then why are you listening to her? She know the fuck she doing. She definitely doesn't. Definitely well, I'm, doesn't. I'm trying to say this because so many. I'm gonna say them. Go ahead, and, ladies. Let me tell you, your mothers sabotage a lot of you. Your mothers love you, but they don't. They they love you. They won't say it, but they don't want to see you do better than them. Because if they do, they will be moving differently. They will be telling you, daughter, don't make the mistake I did. Get a man, do something. Learn how to cooperate with a man. So um, what are you doing with yourself? Well, now I'm in school. So when I got out of that relationship, that I wasn't doing nothing. So he basically took care of me. So. Now, um, when I got out of that, I'm in my last year. This is my last semester of school. So, what, what are you going to school for? Sociology. Oh, oh Lord, another useless degree. <laughs> and what are honestly, you going to do, you gonna do with a degree in sociology? I actually, I didn't realize that I wanted to do human resources until like now, but um, that's pretty much. I didn't. I really got into um, hum, to sociology because um, I because just wanted to easy. learn more about like. It's not really not because it's easy, but because I like the research and I really want. Okay, to but when you guys, college. okay, I want to know when you sat down with the college counselor and you were picking degrees. Did you also did you pick a degree based upon the careers that it could produce? Mm, no. no, I just the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. The answer is no. Where else? Where else can where else can people go? Sign up for tens, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt, and not know what it's for. Right. That's what I'm trying to get to understand. If you're in the humanities, ladies, let me say this to the audience: If you're a woman with a humanities degree, sociology, psychology, uh, communications. Business administration, business management, marketing, anything like that. You fucking need a husband. Science, technology, engineering, math, law, medicine, pharmacy, accounting. Those are the kind of degrees that you might not need a husband. Mostly everything else, unless I missed them, if it ain't in the College of Engineering, the College of Mathematics, if it ain't over on that side of the campus with science, technology, engineering, and math, you need a husband. Unless you're going to the law school. And at 27, sociology, I ain't had a relationship in three years, cool. What's next? I don't have a next. <laughs> now okay, at least you're honest. <laughs> now How tall are you? I'm five five, well five six, yeah, five six. Five six, dress size? Yeah, I wear twelve in dresses, so I weigh about one hundred eighty pounds. I think I'm a, yeah. Last time I weighed myself, I was one hundred eighty seven pounds. So I definitely need this. Definitely, def, but I okay. used. Granted, I used to be two hundred and sixty pounds when I was in that relationship, so I definitely have, um, I guess, gotten a little better. Okay. All right. Let me let, let me come back to that. You know, you know everything I'm gonna say. What, yeah. what, what, would, what would I say right now? In these three years, why haven't I been focusing way more? Well, on my do you ever want to get married? Definitely. I yeah. Definitely. Do you want children? Yeah, I want like six kids. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <sighs> I want a big family. I've always imagined a big family. But I'm, not, I'm late. I'm definitely late. No, 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 no. See, y'all don't sound like y'all take life seriously. Right. A woman who said she was 260 pounds, now you're down to 190. 
You're getting a sociology degree at 27, and you're talking about you want six kids? You sound like kids who are going, you sound like kids who are go, making after Christmas lists. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want, I want, I want, but yeah, but it's not serious because everybody has a sexual marketplace value. It's a credit rating. It's a, it's an amount of money you get to spend on the marketplace. It's what you can afford. Men have it. Women have it. Can you afford a man that can afford six children? Is your sexual marketplace value high enough to afford a man who can provide for a wife and six children? Well, no, but granted, I do want, I will work. Like, I'm not one of those women that's be like, I'll put in 10%. Like, I definitely can, I definitely want to contribute to my household. Not only what percentage that, of the fa- um, what, what percentage of over, what percentage of the family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for, for a lifetime? For a lifetime? I mean, I'll say at least 40 to, not to say I want to go half for him, but I definitely take up at least 40 to 50 percent because 40 so, so meaning so meaning if you stop bringing in income for any reason the family is in serious financial jeopardy you right is that what you're saying you want to have to be responsible for for a lifetime That question, that think yeah. about that question basically says, what do you want to have to contribute? Meaning, if it's not there, what's at risk? So now, under those framings, what do you want to have to be responsible for financially for the family for a lifetime? I take that back. <laughs> Give me about. <laughs> Give me. A- I guess the normal answer, 10 to 15 to 20 percent. <laughs> what state do you live in? What state do you live in? What state do you live in? I live in Georgia, Atlanta. How much would a man need to make to afford a wife, six children in Atlanta? I'm going to assume at least 800K or to above. But the thing is, I really can't explain it. Like I'm not looking at the actual the dollar amount, I guess, because I watch my. Of course you're not, because you ain't got to fucking spend it. Yeah, you're right, ma'am. You're right. No cap. Do you, I don't. There's no nice way to ask this question. There's no nice way. At 800,000, what, what kind of professions would a man need to have to make $800,000 a year? I'm going to assume a, at least a lawyer, accountant. He has to be def- an engineer. Probably that. Shoot, at this point, an entertainer. He would have to, <laughs> like, now that I think about it, for eight hundred k because they're not even making that a year. So, yeah. so I want to go back to what I said five minutes ago. You you don't you're not serious. You're laughing. I mean, I'm I'm asking you serious life questions. You're like an 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 attorney, a lawyer, an accountant. What accountants do you know that are almost millionaires? Well, I was thinking more like a business, you know, like a like a like somebody you know, into really high business. I mean, my cousin's into business and I know that he's bringing in at least half of a million dollars. So I'm... How old is your cousin? What? Now, I think he's 42, 40, 42. Or and what does your cousin do for a living? Well, he works for Primerica. So, yeah. And they just and hit their... his paychecks? Well, I know because they have levels in Primerica. You've so seen his paychecks? You like, You've seen his paychecks? No, but th- they You've seen his paychecks? No, ma'am, I know Primerica very well. I have a lot of respect for Primerica. You've seen his paychecks? No. Okay. Yeah, what? No, I haven't. 
what professions, careers, what a man need to do? You said an attorney. Uh, what percentage of attorneys, what kind of attorney would you, do you think would make $800,000 a year? What kind a of defense. practice? Huh? What kind of practice? I would definitely, I would definitely say defense. Definitely defense. De defense defense is just or no 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 i say i'll say uh what's what is the one when they do wills like probate or something like that what's the one when they do like the wills like when the like when the big guys like pass over okay those people okay tax probate <laughs> oh. something like that something like that okay and why i'm asking these questions is because i need you ladies out here to understand that women like I'm talking to and like so many, you guys have just been able to go to, you've been given a menu and said, order whatever you want. And you don't think about the cost. You don't think about anything. So this means a lot of you don't think about family plan planning or financial st structures or anything else. So when I start asking you questions about the man, it's like, uh, you can't even tell me what kind of law most attorneys don't make nowhere close to 800,000. Personal injury, corporate tax, but very few. Family, very, very few. And what percentage of men make $800,000 or more, do you think? Well, I would take that. I'm not even going to say that they need to make, I feel like 800,000 kind of like- Ma'am, we're straight. not going to change the number. We got the number. You right. just can't change it because it's starting to get uncomfortable. You said six kids in Atlanta and you ain't going to be living in East Point. Right. So don't change it. And the thing is, what percentage of men do you think earn that kind of money? I say at least in Atlanta, definitely under 10%, five, under 5%. Under what percent, what, under, point, what, yeah. uh, what percentage? I say under, I say five. I say five percent. Out of your the mind. The number is eight hundred k. No, ma'am, you're talking. Ten percent of men earn a hundred thousand dollars or more. You're talking about top three, five percent. You're talking about in the one tenth of a percent. So, see, when I ran that number about single black millionaires, you're talking less than two hundred thousand men nationwide. Around 200,000 men. And here's where it gets really hard, where it gets extremely hard. You don't have to know the profession. How old are you, 27? What's the oldest you would want your man to be? Um, no older than 40. <laughs> no older than 40. So you want a almost a millionaire man at 40 years old? Well, I... Ma'am... It is what it is. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying this is how irrational. Well, because, I was really answering the question about 800k for six kids. Honestly, well, that's I what you said you wanted. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't, of course, like you know, be looking for a guy to make an 800k. Like that's not kind of something. yeah. But you want to make it. But you want. But you don't want to pay more than 10 percent of the family financial load, and you do want children. Right. Do you want to marry an average man earning forty one thousand dollars a year? $20 and 50 cents an hour? No, that's no. <laughs> definitely not. Ma'am, you're five foot seven, 187 pounds down from 260. What would you rank yourself? Fresh face out of the shower, you can't use seven. Your natural face, your natural hair. Uh, this is definitely my natural face. I definitely, well, I give myself at least a seven, eight. <laughs> eight. I said I you seven, can't eight. use seven. Okay, eight. Definitely an eight. <laughs> so you put yourself up there with Beyonce? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would. Well, we don't. You are, you are five. <laughs> you're average. You're a solid five. I guess it's all up to, you know, the person. No, it's not. See, the difference is most people have opinions. I'm trained in this stuff. Right. You can think highly of yourself, ma'am, but have you met, have you dated have you seriously dated a man earning two hundred thousand dollars or more? Legally. No. <laughs>
Have you dated well, a man no. making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more legally? My ex, he made yeah, but it, like I said, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. So okay. So why do you think you can get four or five times more several years later? See, the ultimate question I was going to ask is, do you think a, you or a woman like you is a worthy prize wife for a man that's in the top 1%? He's got to do a lot to be in that in that income bracket. Right. So, do you fit that? No. No, not no, no, no. Okay. No. So, but my so at least that's at least you got that now. But the question is, you give yourself an 8 Right up there with Beyonce. I mean, if we put your face and Beyonce's face next to one another, you're saying 50% of the men would say, I want her. 50% of the men would say they want Beyonce. That's what you're saying to the audience. That's when you say you put yourself up there with her, man. Honestly, I, honestly, I really wouldn't care what... Um... Well, somebody will rank my face or, you know... Well, I well see, that can't be the answer. That can't be the answer. You, that's the part of the problem. You ladies don't care, but you freaking gotta care. Because you ladies judge men all the time. But when I've we never... start judging, stop, stop. Why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you care what men want? If you want one of these men to pay for you and the kids. I'm trying to make it make sense because you're going to tell me I wouldn't care what they think. So should, should a man roll up to you? I don't care what you think about me making $41,000 a year. Shit. Submit to me and go make my babies. And what I'm trying to show you guys, I'm not trying to humiliate anybody. What I'm trying to show you guys is the, is the difference in what women have been told. That they can have it all. And you don't have to care about a man and what just what I want. City girls, we up and da da da. Get the bag. And that's what this leads to. To young women ex valuing themselves extremely high based upon little more than ego and personal pride. And you start trying to put some things to it that I'm for a market, and then it looks like I'm tearing people down. But yet you do the same thing to men. I do have a question though. Why would you not be okay with an average man, an average earning? What do you do for you say you got you want to get a degree in uh sociology, right? You get a degree yes. in sociology? Okay. Um, so you'll be in HR or something like that, right? Not yes. I'm actually an intern now with my job for... Okay. HR, professional. Can you not hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. You said you'll HR. be an HR professional. Yeah. Okay, you can't nod your head. You just got to answer. Oh. Cause, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You got to yeah, be audible. HR. We got a show. You can't... Okay, so that means you're going to be earning between forty and sixty thousand dollars a year. That's the average, around fifty thousand. Why can't you get with a man who's average earning too? Honestly, that's what I was. I, I, honestly, that's I'm. That's why I was saying eight hundred k was kind of high because I feel like even with me ha making, let's say, about fifty to sixty k, and then he's making another. You know, even if he was making like. 80K, 90K, no, no, not whatever. 80, not 80, not 80. 80 is in the top 15%. I said 41, average. Um, I don't know. 
I don't, I guess, I guess, I guess it depends on the person. No, it like, doesn't. Of course. Cause, cause see what you're doing right now is you're sitting there trying not to offend men, but ultimately you're saying you will be settling for a man earning average money. I kind of don't want to be making more than my husband though. Of course not. I don't want to be, I don't want to make. Well, hold on, work. hold on. You're not guaranteed to make more. HR professional, HR people earn 40 to 60 where you are. And if I can pull up the numbers in Atlanta, it's going to be around 42. I honest, well. And here's the problem. And here's the problem me, with that. You if you don't want to be making more, no, no, don't over talk to me. If you don't want to make more, then you should have got married early. This is, a, this is what women all, often do. I don't want to be making more than my husband, yet you guys wait too long to where you're earning too much. You ain't earning nothing yet. But I want to know from all my average men out there, why you are, are, are why they aren't good enough. No, I never said they were. I never said they wasn't good. Okay, enough. then why I they just, don't? Why they're not? A, why, why guys like that wouldn't be fit? Whatever it is, man. When I asked you, could you make? Would you be willing to marry a man making forty one thousand? You definitively said no three times. So when we come back in here talk about what they got to do and split hairs, you didn't make those concessions back then. This conversation is helping people, whether it's comfortable or not. It really is. Right. Because I want you to understand that your non-black counterparts don't do this. White women get with average white men. Hispanic women get with average Hispanic men. Middle Eastern, Asian, other. They get with average men, especially average. We got women in our community who you know you were a large woman at one point, and even losing weight, you're still bigger than a man. You know that. Okay? You've got no children. You would give yourself, from a pride standpoint, an, an eight. Cool. I give you closer to a five. All right. No, either way, you're not, a, you're not, anyway, I don't want to split that hair. I don't want to go down that path because it go to, but either way, it puts you around the average to above average category. There are men who would say you're below average based upon your weight. I'm going to be honest. There are men who would say you're below average based upon your weight and then uh, the tattoos and all the other kind of stuff. But I'm not making those judgments. My thing is, there, you, you seem to want men who are outside of what a lot of men would perceive as a sexual marketplace value. And then when I ask you about that, the answer I recall you saying is you don't care what they think. Well, I was saying I don't care what they think of, as far as my looks. Like if somebody was to be like, oh, well, I feel like she's a five or I feel like she's like, that does not bother me because I'm not sleeping with those people that think about that about me or I don't even care what they think, what think about me because I'm never going to see those people. So I don't Okay, care well, that. okay. But, so my, my, my retort to that is there are men in the marketplace. What men do you care about then? The man you would want, right? Yeah, the man I want one, not somebody that's just gonna troll me on the internet. <laughs> ma'am, like, ma'am, it's not about a man trolling you on the internet. And those and the men that you would want have higher standards than the men you find that you think are trolling you. That's the point. The men that I'm talking about are just a cross section of men, average men. But you want an above average or an elite level man, and those men want even more. So if you don't care what the guys who are trolling you ain't worth your time, are you what the men you want? Are you what they want from a woman? I definitely have work to do. Let me say like, All I, right. I still have then, more work if to do. You've got work to do. That's always the question. If you got work to do, if there are women that are already there and it's crowded up there, why, and this is what, this is what men, do, why are you so, fic- why do you have to get one of those? Why can't you get a man that's, that's already on the level you're at right now? Cause if you're saying you got it, you not. So what you are saying is I'm not up there yet. That's what I think we're both hearing you say. Am I right? Uh, you said I got work to do. Which means I'm not there yet. Right. I, yeah, I still feel like, hold I, feel on, like I definitely want to go away. If you're, hold on. If you're not there yet, 
That means I still got work to do. Yes or no? Correct. Right. But where you are right now, would you accept the man where you are right now? And where you are right now is much better than where you were when you were 260 pounds. I would. I would. Like, I don't have a problem with somebody. It's just that I, f- I find it like dudes that make, a, I guess, I'm not even going to say 40. Dudes that make it like, let's say the warehouse jobs that normally these dudes work now. Like, if they're making like thirty thousand dollars, they don't have. For me, I feel like they don't have enough ambition. Like they don't want to get up and go out do things. Like they, can, it seems like they're all about just talking and not actually doing things. It seems like the only guys, well, in my experience that I've come across, that are open to you know living life are older guys that's making more money. The the the, and it seems like when I get with guys that are making less, I'm doing more than them, i.e. helping them get car, helping them uh, get a car, like their car breakdown, or I'm helping them pay Man, bills. Just, or, you're going all the way down to a guy who's, you, you, you went to, to a guy who's making 30000 That's not a guy who's making average money. You just tried to, you, you well, equated, the, hold on, hold on, I'll let you I'm speak. I'll room. let you speak. You equated a guy who's making average money to a guy who's making $15 an hour and lacks ambition. And that's disrespectful right. to average men. I won't let you do that. I let you speak because well, I want you to get your thought. No, I let you speak because I want you to get your thought out. But I do want you women to start making different distinctions because you talk about men like we're all the same in their levels. And what has come through is the men that you want are above your level. And the men that are on your level, you don't necessarily want. And you say because they lack ambition. Well, ma'am, the men who have ambition have wives that look like that. That's the hardcore reality. Being in HR is not ambitious. It's a job. And this is part of that city girl, get the bag, we up, something and so forth. You got average women talking like y'all are boss bitches. And you're average talking about ambition. At 27, you haven't been rude, you haven't been nasty, but the mindset is still the same. So we're gonna sw- we're gonna put a, pause, a comma right here, we're gonna fast forward, okay? This was tough. Let's just get all the way to the end. Let's just say for, for the sake of argument, it doesn't work out. You never really find the guy who's on your level or that you're quite a fit with uh, it just wasn't in the cards and you, you don't have any kids, but you've, you've lived a, you know, professional life or whatever at age 55, if you're single and childless, what does life look like? If you're unmarried and no children, what does life look like for you socially? 55, no kids, not married. I'd definitely be depressed. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'd definitely be depressed probably okay. more than likely. Okay. Um, if you don't get married, are you going to have enough money to pay for your retirement and live comfortably from age 65 to 85? Definitely. Cause I'm definitely planning for retirement now. So how much, I'm how much, be- how much would you need to retire to live from 65 to 85? Based off my math I've done, I think I put in, I think it was like right at about 300 something K it was right about 320 or something. You think $300,000 will last you 20 years of elder care? Well, based off my job and you know, like, let's say, no, I ma'am, it, no, ma'am. I'm I asked, hoping that I, I have, asked, I, no, 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 no. I asked you a straightforward question. You're saying $300,000 to last 20 years. Yeah, because I'm expecting. Okay. Listen, 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 $300,000 for 20 years. Ma'am, that ain't even $20,000 a year. That's like $16,000 a year. That's poverty wages. Let me give you the real number. Okay. 1.9 million. If you were 25 and making $50,000 today, zero children, not married. 
and you got a cost of living rate increase for the next 40 years, and you stack $200 away every month for the next 40 years, you would still have a $750,000 shortfall in your retirement. And what I'm showing is that women, without men, you, you underestimate, you underestimate or overestimate. The notion that you think in your elder years, because I guess you're going to say, I'm going to have my house paid off, my car. It is extremely expensive to age in this country. But we keep pumping this city girl youth culture to our women to where you guys are miscalculating your geriatric years and you're mismanaging your prime years. Which is why when I asked at 55, you said I'd be depressed. Ma'am, based upon this conversation, that is much more likely. Much more likely based upon this conversation. So I would say go back and listen to this. Dispassionately run the number. If you have somebody who worked at Primerica, I got a lot of respect for Primerica. The numbers, I, I know Primerica. I was in Primerica. I get it. But man, one point, and you're HR, 1.9. You can't think $300,000 is enough. So what am I telling the audience? What did I say earlier? Unless you are a woman earning a lot of money, you, a husband is not a luxury. You need a man. And that's what hasn't been told to our community. It's not a want, it's not a desire. And the way you've described a man, I asked you specifically, what do you want? And what you've given me is what you want. And that's how you pick men. You don't pick men based upon need. Not once have I heard you talk about the needs. I haven't asked about the needs, but I gave you room to speak about them. We haven't talked about the man's character, his ability to lead, what he is. I focused on what I know women actually do and give women an opportunity to talk about the stuff that's really important. So it's not that like, as no, you couldn't answer those things. So go back and listen to this, man, because like I said, our non-black counterparts, women, then you get upset, then y'all get upset when the guy get with a white woman. Um, hold on just a second. I'm bring in a, uh, Ms. McCormick. Hey, Ms. McCormick, how are you? Hi. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am well. What do you got for me? Um, so I'm 22 years old. Um, 22? I am, yeah, 22. So I'm right in that range. I was listening. I'm right. Like I'm right. I'm getting right to that range that you were talking okay. about earlier. Um, and, um, I'm a college student. I work as a private tutor for, uh, families with kids. I have a psychology degree. Same, same. Okay. Both, we so. got, we got to okay. get to, we got to get to the question now. Okay. Um, my question is, um, what, so you're saying, um, around this age, I should be looking for, um, a partner for my life, but, Around mm -hmm. this age, men aren't in the, most men are in the position. Well, are you in a to, predominantly white college? Yeah. Do, do, do non-black women say the same things or are they looking for husbands? They're looking for husbands. Thank you. So don't tell me what the men are like. Yeah, but you got to no, find No, 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 right? let, let, let that marinate right there. Let that marinate. Let that marinate. Okay. Don't move. Let that marinate because y'all always want to put it off on what the men are. Non-black women are looking for, for husbands. So it's not about what the men are. It's about what the men you deal with do. Okay. So how do you know if they want to get married or not? Well, like, let's, uh, okay, you, let's, let's, let's uh, before age. we do that, before we do that, before we do that, okay. that's a fair question. Were you raised to be a wife? Um... Nope. I think I need some help. No, no, no. The <laughs> answer, the answer is no. I wasn't raised to be a wife. Okay, no. So the no. men I pick are based upon what I like and not what I need. 
Yes. So you're not even in a position to talk about what the men are if you're not what it is you seek. That was my ultimate point. You ladies have been so pre-wired to go in and look for the deficiencies in men, the splinter in my eye and not look in the moat in your eye. If I put you in a room with 1,000 affluent, educated, uh, upperly mobile, marriage-minded black men, would they pick you? think they would? I mean, I'm pretty sure they would. They would. Now, I understand I, I, you're I, in the room with women who have been raised to be his counterpart of all races. I don't mean would they pick you over nothing. I mean, would they pick you in the marketplace? I... That's a lot of competition. So thank you, uh, thank you. Do you want children? Do you want children? Yes, I How want many kids? no no more than four. No more. No more than four. Uh, do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant with your first child? No, I want to be a stay at home mom. Uh huh. And what state do you live in? I live in Michigan. Right. How much is a man going to have to make in Michigan to have a stay at home wife with four children? Mm, 150k $150,000 in Michigan are you living in the projects <laughs> do you want your children uh, to be able no. to go to college if you want them to yes do you want to be able to travel nationally and internationally with your family yes see what I'm showing you guys is women have no idea what money because they don't pay for shit like we do 150000 for four kids and a stay-at-home wife in Michigan? In Atlanta, you're talking close to $300,000. You heard that woman before you, she was talking about eight hundred, and that was six kids. You were here the entire time. How could you get one hundred and fifty when she was talking eight? I don't know if I want four kids exactly. Doesn't matter. $150,000. What is your degree again? A psychology. Uh huh. Another useless degree. What do you plan on doing with it? Um, I want to work in children's like psychiatry. Okay. And how about how much do you think? And how much do you think you'll be making by age forty if you never got married and had kids? Mm, eighty, eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. So that means your husband would have to replace your eighty thousand dollar income at forty. So whatever he's making, he'd have to make eighty thousand dollars on top of that, plus pay for the kids. This is why math is our friend. Finances. That is a big part of part Right, of but y'all don't think about that. You, you're looking to be a housewife and you're trying to pick from college. Okay, you're, if, you, if what you want is the case, your husband is nowhere close to being your age. He's about 35 or 40. Would you marry a man that's 35 or 40 years old? I wouldn't want to. Well, then, then what the hell? See, this is the problem with our, our culture being so youth-driven. Our women are making decisions for men based upon athletes, entertainers, and musicians because they're young and they're rich. Well, I was thinking... Men don't um, make don't that kind of money until 45 to 55. I was thinking like... Uh, construction don't uh, construction workers make a lot or like um, people that invest in stocks and a lot like people who invest in stocks what is that that can be you me or an investment banker or somebody on Wall Street see Becky Marisol Mylinga Jamila they know what the men do they know the careers that's why they're hanging outside the law school outside of the, outside of the science building they know y'all just figure I don't know stocks I'm doing this in a joking way because y'all just talk. And your competition is standing out front of the li law library because they're hunting these men. And y'all are just hoping this shit happens. I mean, I'm, I'm of course going to put myself in those environments. In you those can't positions. put them in, in, you can't put yourself in an environment you can't identify. 
I mean, I've, I went to school with law students. I've go, I go to school currently with what kind of, of okay. People. You just said what I've said, man, you said construction. I was saying like people with not rappers and entertainers and stuff like that. Construction like workers don't make enough money to have a stand on white with four kids. I guess it's because I see it done on like TV or something. So what know. the French freaking toe? <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Our black women are not serious about relationships. You're a college-educated woman talking about shit on TV. I mean, in other people's lives, it works. I mean, I don't know. Who? Um... I see women that live in, like, middle-class neighborhoods, and their husbands do... Um, some of the women that I work for, because I tutor kids, some of their husbands work. Um, I remember one lady. And how old are these people? Um, 30, 40, 30. 30 or 40. That's a big range. Uh, the mom is 34 and the dad was 35. So they Have you kids. sat down and asked them how long they've been together? Um, I think they met in college. No, uh, they no, 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 no. Do you know their story? No, I have not. You just know what you think they did. And this is the problem in the black community. Our women do not see it coming up. All women see is the outcome. They see the money. They don't know what it took to get there. That's why you guys are walking around saying you don't care what men think because you are there at the finish line waiting for the winners to win. Well, guess what? You don't see all the dieting, all the training, all the all the sacrifice, everything that went in. Y'all ass is at the finish line. And if you're at the finish line, what do you get when you win a race at the finish line? What is it called? When you win a race at the finish line? Yes. What do you, you what do you get? Oh, an award? A trophy? A trophy. If you want to stand at the finish line, you better be a trophy wife. And I think that's one of my goals in life. Is to a be goal? Ma'am, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. You want the trophy wife outcomes. No, I want to be, like, I want to be fit. I want to I want No, no, be, no. Uh, you I want the trophy fit. wife outcomes. I know that's what you want, but your ass is sitting in the stands. You ain't doing nothing. You don't even know I what mean, these I, men... I want to be I, down there in the dirt with them, but they don't, I don't know. Men don't like when you help them. They don't like when you, you know, try to bring them up or See, What I want you to understand is she's having a completely different conversation. She's talking to her damn self. You're talking about college age guys. And I just told you. I mean, that's what I'm around. I don't know. Which which just goes to show you need to be quiet. You don't know what the French toast you're talking about. I already told you your husband's not in college. So how long do you think I have to wait for that? You ain't going to get it with this belligerent ass attitude. And the problem is you're too cute for your mouth. Right now, I'm perfectly. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you do. You're just not being rude. Oh, well, see right there, right there, ma'am. I just said, are non-black women getting married? In your college, are they getting married? They are. So it ain't the problem with the men. The problem is non-black women pick men at the foundation and are willing to build up. Y'all want men who are already at the trophy line, already winning, and if they and, and they want women who are trophy wives. Trophy wife is more than a look. It's a mindset. And your mindset doesn't match what you think your looks are. That's the problem. Guys don't want you to be in the dirt with them. No. Not true. But when's the last time you got in the dirt with anybody to do anything? I mean, I've, right now I date men that are at my level, you know, college students, broke. So it's like we help each other. Uh -huh. And when they do get to that point, they usually do go off and date other women. Maybe it is because my mindset isn't. Maybe. Okay. Have you ever asked them? Oh, don't stop talking. 
Come over to Alchemy. Have you ever asked these men who, once they get on, they leave your ass for a white girl? Have you ever asked them why? Were you not as attractive as those the women they left you for? No, they were regular people. Regular. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not a problem of looks. Then why would they leave? Have you asked them? Uh-huh. Don't tell me what you think. I asked no. a question. Have you asked? No. Them? Because it usually so, ends bad, like it's an argument or something. I'm not okay. able to. The argument is started by whom? Uh, me, of course, because they're cheating or something Thank like you. that. Thank you. Yeah. So they leave you and go on to something else. Okay, well, uh, got news for you. Bad news, good news, don't care. Um, the kind of men most women want have options. I don't say accept cheating, just know that. But see, the question is, have you ever asked, hey, Daryl, why'd you leave? And what it doesn't sound like, it sounds to me like y'all had an argument based upon what? He was cheating on you? Yeah. And you never cheated on him, right? No. So if, it's, went, so, if I went, so if I went, so if I went through your social media and your emails, that would stand up to that? You were you aren't flirting. You, yeah, come on. I do this too much. No, I don't, I don't, I don't cheat. Uh huh. Women cheat. call cheating. Women classify cheating as having sex, and you guys, you guys cheat more than we do emotionally. But let's just say you don't, ma'am. So I'm just poly purebred out here, and he left. One guy, two guys. You need to start asking them why are they doing it. Why? Because they didn't just cheat. You left. They went on to another relationship, right? No, not not usually. I think one. One one guy that I used to talk to. All right, to. I'm spending too much time doing this. At the end of the day, um, mindset. That's why I say self-awareness. Guys, it's going to be a lot about balance. The mindset. And, and this is one of the things. This is why we have so many of these chameleons and rebels. They can have the look, but if they don't have the mindset, and I can't give you a mindset, what do you do you think it's like my friends, the people that I hang around? Maybe I, I think should it's hang a around lot of stuff. It's our, culture, raised, it's our culture. It's our culture. Where's your were you yeah. raised with your mother and father? Um, for the first <laughs> ten years of my life. And then they divorced. Was your mother remarried? No. Did your mother marry to your father? Yeah, they were married. You have, did your mother have uh have do you have any siblings? I have one sister. Older or younger? Older. Your mother's child? Yep. We're just, how much older is she? Oh, she's two years older than me. Is she married? Nope, but she has a baby on the way. Mm-hmm. So your mother and father separated when you were 10? Mm-hmm. And she was 12? Yep. Did your mother raise you two to be, who, who filed for divorce? I never asked that question. You I never should. asked that question. Who? I'm pretty sure it was my mother, though. I'm pretty sure it was my mother. I'm pretty sure you don't know, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, has your mother had a serious relationship since your since she split with your father? Yeah, she had one. Mm-hmm. How does your mother speak about men and or relationships? Is she positive? Is she telling you to go get married and settle down and have a family and be a, a wife? Um, I get that more from my dad. Yeah, that's yeah. not what the question. The question I asked. The yeah, question I asked. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, no, not really. She doesn't. See, I, need you, I need you to understand something. Not answering the question I asked. See, y'all don't see that as a form of disrespect. Don't you? Don't, and then you're still talking. See, this is what I mean by mindset. You're 22. I'm, I'm 30 years older than you, and you can't contain yourself. Femininity does not buck up. It does not over talk. It does not need to be heard. It does not need to correct. Femininity doesn't do any of these things. And the answer is, no, I wasn't raised to be a wife, which is okay. But then you don't just become a wife. You have to understand you were raised to be an independent Woman who speaks her mind, which equates to buy a dog and die alone, 
Or if you do get a man, he's a beta male. Beta. How do you fix this? Acknowledge that it's there and stop making excuses for it. Stop saying, well, this, well, that, well, just no, it is what it is. You step on the scale, it's 300 pounds. Don't tell me because I got thyroid and my mama didn't get your ass in the gym, drink some water, eat a plant-based diet and do the work. That's the only way to fix it, young lady. Awareness and work. So do you think um, maybe like going to a therapist or something? I don't know how to get the work. Well, that work, that that is an issue if there's underlying issues, but I always a fan of therapy, true. But cognitive behavioral therapy only addresses some, this is much more cultural and attitudinal. Yeah, and all my friends around me are like, you know, independent, all of that. And that's, and that's great. But I, when I say why well, I want to get married or something like that, or like I want to be a housewife. Why do you want to be married though? Um, because I don't want to be, I want kids that have a father in the home. And I want, I work with kids and I work with people that have two parent households. So I, I love it. It, it just makes me feel good. It makes, I don't, it just makes the most sense in life. And I, I want to grow up with somebody. I want to go on vacations. I want to take pictures, just the whole, the whole nine yards, the white. So I want you guys to understand that these are the kind of women you avoid. And I'm gonna tell you why, because everything you said about marriage is self-serving and temporary. It's fun. It's pictures, it's trips. Not once did you say you wanted to be a man support system. Everything you want is selfish for you. I mean, he's coming along the ride. He's going to have fun. I'm going to be there for him, supporting him, doing and all they, that. And women like her think that that is a worthy prize. They, women like her think that all the work you do to get yourself to be a top-level athlete, to run the race of life, to compete at the levels and win, to be able to make enough money to support a stay-at-home wife with four children homeschooling, they think it's enough that you just get to come along for the ride. Chick, he's paying for the French toast ride. What are you talking about? So I shouldn't expect any of that when I do. You should expect a dog, some pet insurance, and some girlfriends. Insane.